Hello, Martin. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. This is second second podcast in English because uh, I have an English guest, English speaking guest, actually German speaking guest, my friend and mentor Martin Gugge from uh, Austria. Uh, Martin, can you can you talk? Uh, can you speak? Some words about uh, yourself. Uh, introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. My name is Mark Kuki. I come from Austria, um, from the south of Austria, a city called Klagenfurt, and there I run a, a school, a Jesuit school, and um, together with my uh, teacher from California, Professor Nato Migliaccio, we run the pitch day intensive camps, and we have some schools in Europe, and he has also a lot of students uh, around the world. And we try to bring them to camp together on the camps, and also to try to help them if they need something to improve the school or the the structure of the school and something like this. Yeah. Definitely, that's what we really appreciate it, especially me as a coach. Uh, but uh, let's dig a little bit deeper. Uh, you're the first Austrian black belt, right? I heard. Yeah. Yeah, you heard. You don't you yeah. know. You don't. You don't. Um, yeah, there's no list or something like. There is a list probably somewhere. I'm, I never cared about this. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, when I'm the first one from West Austria, so there have been black belts in Austria, but they were not from Austria. Mm -hmm. So there were Brazilian guys coming, and um, but I was the first one from uh, Austrian. Mm -hmm. guy Austrian, Austrian. Austrian black belt. Yeah, that's actually that's actually pretty cool. Uh, do Do you know how many black belts are, there are in Austria right now? Um, I can't just guess, but I think uh, there are around 30 right now. 30? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's surprising. We have we have in Czech Republic for 49. I just checked a little bit, yeah. a little bit earlier. Uh, first one was Karel Pravets in, but, okay. but he is in the US, so doesn't doesn't count that much. Uh, but still, it's uh, it's 2007 when he we got or six something like that when he got his black belt. And then first black belt actually really living in Czech Republic is uh, I think 2012 or okay. you know, later. Nice. So so it's uh, it's very young actually in in Czech Republic and obviously in Austria as well yeah, because. Sure. Uh, 30 black belts. I, I I think Polish guys have like hundreds. Yeah, I Polish think already. Poland and England have the most. Yeah, and yeah. Europe. Yeah, and how is how is uh, Austrian community uh, overall? Uh, do do you feel like it's it's growing? Uh, is it in every major city? Um, I think it's definitely growing. Um, in Austria uh, Gi and Togi, um, but of course, like I think that's in every city. When there are more gyms in one city and the bigger cities they have then they, they don't want to work together. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to do in Austria too. That's what we call the Modolfo camps. We try to bring all the schools together from Austria and train together. So it's not to make any money. It's just to have a training for the higher belts mm -hmm. to share and to keep improving the quality from Austria. And I mean, the name Modolfo camp is, uh, you know Modolfo? Yeah, uh, Modolfo like uh, the, the fighter or? What? Uh, actually, what, uh, as far as I know, it's uh, ADCC. After ADC, there was a guy called Modolfo who brought after ADC all the, the stars mm -hmm. from ADC together to train, to hang out, mm -hmm. and they call it Modolfo Camp. And okay. you know, I, I like the idea, uh -huh. and we call it Modolfo Camp from Austria. Okay, yeah, why not? Yeah. Why not? And we do it now um, four times per year, around, so every quarter of, of a year we do it. And actually, it's pretty nice, and it's from now we, we switched, we do from purple belt up, mm -hmm. because it's not to get a lot of people. But like you, you you're teaching uh, in a school, mm -hmm. so how often do you get training for yourself? Yeah, and that's the goal to to share knowledge, a lot of sparring. But some higher guys they give, give input, but they do now what they work on. I said, okay, mm -hmm. nice. That, that would I do. That would you do. And that's sharing. And that's, that's, that's try to improve the quality from Austria. Austria is more than Czech and other countries, so it's it's possible. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't have all schools, but. To a very uh, a good amount of number, we have good connection. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. really nice. That's really yeah. nice. I kind of feel like even in Czech Republic, we have um, when when those teams come to the, to the tournaments, for example, where we organize, it's it's really nice to see those yeah. guys. You you get to hang out with them. Uh, very rarely there are some uh, like bad, bad bloods uh, around around. And I think it doesn't matter if you fight uh, each other. I mean, when it's yeah. in a local area, it's, I mean, come on. Exactly. It's not the. It's Broad time to yeah. no. It's time to improve. Im improve exactly. Yeah, time to improve, and that's um, you still can be friends, but we fight. Right? Yeah. I mean, what you have here, Fonsa Stach in Czech. I mean, he's a, a role model for this. Yeah. He invites yeah. everybody to train, and on the other side, he fights them. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. 
Yeah, I, th- I think that's that's a really good mindset, and, and it's pretty unique to to Jiu Jitsu. I would say it's like not likely even in MMA, which is uh, I think it's s- not sister, sister sport or so. Yeah, but I think also in MMA and Jiu Jitsu, um, we have to to get this mindset mm. more to to work to improve, um, because in the end we all like what we do, and we we, mm. we have to to get other people to keep the fire burning in ourselves. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think the sharing is important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's really good. I wanted to ask you also about like uh, I, I know that you are also a teacher. Uh, do you still teach? Do you teach? Yes. So you have a full time job as a teacher. So far, yes. Yeah. Then you have a full time job at your academy, and then you have your family. And every time I see you, uh, and, I, and I, I'm I'm telling to myself, okay, I'm I'm gonna gain a little bit on him. But every time I see you on the camp or somewhere else, you're again like miles away, leaping from from uh, the state of a skill that I, I remember you from how do you how do you keep up with uh, with everything how do you manage to to do the two two jobs family and training for yourself actually actually this is not true that I'm always that far ahead you are, you are. but uh, thank you but I think um, it's just time management yeah. um, and like what I do is I um, I always set this goal that when you reach a black belt there are black belts who just happen to reach this level And they are black belts who are, are tapping other black belts, mm-hmm. like Marcelo Garcia was some guy like this. And that was me who was the goal, not to, guy, to be the guy who just uh, is happy to have the belt. Mm-hmm. I'm happy to learn more. And I think there is so much more to learn. And of course, you cannot um, do everything by yourself, but perhaps my students can improve faster when I know more. Mm-hmm. I had never had an uh, instructor for a long time until I met Renato, but before I just had to travel, there was no Jitsu in Austria. And perhaps it can shorten the time for the next generation and also shorten the time for moves. I think, okay, they, we learned them, but then you realize, man, mm-hmm. I spent four, three months on a move which actually doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so t- tell me a little bit about the, about the time and management. Time management. Yes. Yeah, what do you, how do you... Manage? Actually, yeah. Um, I think you cannot do it with every job. And this was, for me, always uh, uh, the decision I, I made pretty early in my life that when I have a find a job which I like then I it must be time for more time for family and time for the sport mm-hmm. yeah so I started sports and uh, theology I'm now I'm a religion teacher and sports teacher um, and you work as a teacher in Austria around 24 hours mm-hmm. we can say yeah a week a week mm-hmm. yeah so um, then there's always time to be home for mm-hmm. hours but then in the evening or sometimes also in the morning it's mm-hmm. time to to teach um, but Of course, now I'm, I did this now for 10 years, and now I'm on a level where I have to decide what I do more. And for next year, I, I reduced my uh, school's hours, mm-hmm. so I teach less in high school. Mm-hmm. So I reduced to 50%, so I have more time for the school. Yeah, school yeah it, there's uh, more reasons, because we want to move to a bigger place. Actually, we do want to do this for a long time now, but I think we... It's the, the, The dream to do this is not the only thing you have to do. You have to commit more. Mm-hmm. And now when I reduce, uh, I hope that we find something because I put more pressure on myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, with regards to your training, um, how do you structure your training around the classes? Do you just roll with the guys and improve your techniques as you teach, teach them to study, to, to give away the techniques? That's how you improve? Or do you have some special... Drilling yes, for you. Uh, both. Um, actually, yes, I, I learn a lot when I teach and when I prepare stuff to, to teach for my school, the curriculum for next month and stuff like this. Um, but that's how I get the understanding, mm-hmm. deep understanding, uh, hopefully. <laughs> and the other side is, of course, I need training partners to drill and those drilling partners mm-hmm. because, um, yeah, to, to write down some stuff uh, is not enough. Sometimes, of course, you have yeah. to drill them stuff. You cannot drill everything, but, yeah, I try to, to drill two to three times per week mm-hmm. if, if there's more time in holidays more every day but uh, this is regular time I have two to three um, hours per, per week to train for myself mm-hmm. then sparring of course with the students and teach okay and you teach every day in the evening uh, work days yes almost every day I don't teach self Thursdays every Thursdays. day so Monday to Friday I normally teach and Thursdays this is my free day and Saturday I teach too You, see, you teach some kind of uh, get together for all the all the uh, as you told me I think yesterday that you have a class for all levels. Yes, for beginners and advanced together mm-hmm. because under the week they are separated um, because you have to have beginner classes. But actually, sometimes the connection between the two groups are not there. Mm-hmm. And Saturday actually in the morning a lot of people have free time, 
Um, and then what we saw first, we had the open class on Saturday. And open class is nice, but from a school uh, perspective, you don't get anything out of open class. It's just pain in the ass in the end. Um, and then we said, okay, let's do a drilling class. It was the same problem because not a lot of people are committed to drilling. Yeah. And then I said, okay, let's do a regular class. And now the class is actually full on Saturday. And I can do on left and right side 15 beginners and 15 advanced guys. Um, it's more stress for me because I run left yeah. and right and yeah. I have to be really um, sharp with my preparation so I can teach them. Uh, but that's what we do um, on Saturday and then this part together. And now, next week, I want to start a competition training then, because uh, normally when we spar in the gym, it's like the called in, in, in judo, they call it randori. Randori, yeah. But the randori is like uh, sparring to improve. Mm -hmm. uh, if you make a mistake, fine, try again. Okay, another guess and taps, uh, try again. Mm -hmm. So you don't care about the outcome because you want to improve. But when you have competitors, you need the uh, shi high training. That's mm -hmm. how they call it uh, gymnastics in judo. Um, and that's what I want to start now. So like, you coach me, Another guy coaches the other guy, then we fight, we fight. and we, we fight the same points. amount for the car, points. Oh, then you know, are, are ADC, even yeah, three I means no points, then two mm -hmm. minutes points. But then, then in the end, we, we film it and we try to give the guys the feedback mm -hmm. how to improve. But it's a different mindset, mm -hmm. and not for everybody in the school. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. just for the guys who really want to compete, and probably will be a, lot, a little more interest, probably. But that's why, especially for the guys who, mm -hmm. who are competing. And uh, how many people, per, like percentage-wise, are actually uh, competing from your from, from your gym? I would say around five to ten percent. Five percent, small percent. Yes, for sure. Okay. okay. And let me also ask you a little bit back because it's something I'm thinking about right now as well. Uh, because we right now just have a uh, regular classes. We call it all levels, and then we have beginners uh, for people who are completely new. So they let's go. So the structure of the school. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, we begin our class again. We do uh, one hour. We run the class with uh, three techniques and the warm up, three techniques, and then we have some sparring, but only technical sparring with position we worked on, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Right? But for the advanced guys, it's only one and a half mm -hmm. hours. And the difference, the big difference between the two groups is that the beginner, in my mind, he has to, to understand the bustle of Jiu Jitsu. So he learns everything a little bit. But of course, he's not the best in everything. Mm -hmm. But to see and understand the whole picture, that first he has to have a curriculum where he can learn everything. And that starts over again after some, some weeks. But for advanced guys, of course, you have to get better in special areas. And that's why it's one month, mm -hmm. the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So for uh, advanced, one month. And you, you said several weeks? Uh, uh, I think I have planned a curriculum now for 16 or 18 weeks. OK, so longer, longer times. So longer times. And then it starts over again okay. to have the basic stuff in there. But yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, if you, if the uh, somebody wants to join your classes, they can join whenever. Uh, with it, with yes, the, to we, the beginners class. we always they can always jump in the beginner class because mm -hmm. it's a course and it starts over again, mm -hmm. and it runs all the time. Okay, mm -hmm. we have actually every day, sometimes even two times per day, a beginner class. Mm -hmm. um, in my school, the beginner class are all in the gi, um, and then later they can switch to no gi or advanced gi. Mm -hmm. Uh, why, why do you do only gi? Because they learn new grips and they don't need to learn new grips then? Um, just actually, no, I, I definitely understand if people like no gi more than gi, I am the same now. Um, but I think the, the gi slows the game down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you have to get a definitely. little more um, technical. Um, because in no gi you can do a lot of conditioning. Mm -hmm. You're fast, you are strong, okay. Yeah. A lot of techniques doesn't work on you because of this. Mm -hmm. But in the gi, um, it's more about technique. And that's why I like the people to start in the gi. And this next thing is um, um, when people start in no gi, they never go to the gi. I mean, it's oh, not necessary. Yeah. Actually, it's not necessary. But what I also like is no MMA guys come in when you put the gis on there. Okay. Yeah. On them. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, because they just want to do no gi and go hard right away. Yeah, no, yeah. you go to the gi class and then you have to do it for one year, one and a half years, and then you can jump in. Okay. Yeah. I, I get a. I gotta say that my my gi classes and uh, no gi classes there there is a very small overlap in people. I mean, that maybe five percent go for both, and the rest g goes one, one direction. Or the other. Yeah. Uh, so the mentality of the group is also just a little bit different. Not not completely because I'm still the teacher, and usually the students look for teachers even if it's unconscious. Yeah. Subconscious, sorry, no, <laughs> subconscious. They they look for teachers that well, who fit them somehow. So it's it's still a, like 
pretty good group but um, yeah th those people are, are different and I have to say the people in the gi are actually longer lasting okay uh, they're more like uh, devoted to, to it and uh, so, so it's e easy, easier for like, for the return to so third so, time <laughs> we are back again yeah we are back again but to be honest I, I already had one podcast when uh, uh, we had four, four interruptions. Uh, the microphone fell off completely from the table. Then uh, uh, my batteries died out in in, uh, in the camera. So I'm used to it, and my 300 listeners will will be okay with it. I okay. <laughs> okay. So we were talking about about the school setting, and uh, one, one more thing I want, wanted to uh, uh, touch on, uh, as you said about um, competition sparrings. Mm -hmm. uh, do you? Uh, because you you will have a some some of a group uh, uh, that that's going to focus on competition. Will you? What is going to be the the, the how to say it? Uh, the flow of the classes bef uh, when it's leading to the competition, like uh, like a training camp, or or is it going to be the same? Or will you focus more like when when the big, for example, ADC trials are coming? You will you'll make more rounds. What 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 is your like view on this? Yeah. Um, actually, I think that the improvement of the guys is more always important than the competition. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, some people compete, some people never compete, and most of the guys never compete. For mm -hmm. them, it's just important to keep improving. They like what they do. They want to have a new challenge, a new subject to work on, and mm -hmm. that's very happy. Mm -hmm. um, for the guys who compete, um, you have to create an own class. Okay, because if you put them to a regular class, they can destroy and hurt the people because their mindset is different. It has mm -hmm. to be different. Um, and that's what I am planning to do now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be small group, right? Small group, yeah. It could be ten people. It's fine for me, mm -hmm. um, because I mean, it depends how you run the school. We are not a one hundred percent committed to competition school. Mm -hmm. um, I try to keep a focus on um, challenge yourself, but it doesn't mean you have to compete. Mm -hmm. Okay, challenge could be in the gym, come to more training, stuff like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I completely agree, and and even um, uh, like a point of view of of the how to say like a life lifetime uh, uh, I'm, I'm not 20 anymore so even though I wanted to start compete a little bit more because I want to show uh, my students that it's it's okay to compete yeah. uh, uh, even though to be honest it's really hard to combine coaching and competing at the Please. same event it's, yeah. it's really it's really hard especially when you even organize it and you need to yeah. be a referee it's then it's completely crazy but um, uh, I want uh, like like from from the from the like school lifetime, or how to say that the my my work time will be limited, maybe thirty years, fifty years, I don't know. So it's gonna change the the flow. I'm, I'm gonna get older. I, I won't be able to compete. But so are so will be the students, and they need to uh, they need to uh, somehow also, or the or the school needs to reflect somehow also how they they will uh, they will be able to train. And as you said, only five percent or ten percent. I I kind of have a a lot of com com like guys who want to compete. I have around 100 students right now that um, that somehow rotate. Yeah, and not not every day on the mat, but 50 gi, 50 no gi, let's say. And um, I, I would say that around 20 are competing, which is which is like 20 percent. Yeah, it's, nice. it's it's really nice. But obviously, it's um, we are uh, quite quite new, so uh, we have a lot of eager guys. Uh, but it's still nice, and even people who are not going to compete for uh, like to, to be with, with ambitions of being a champion or something like that but I just wanted to, to try, try yeah. Yeah. And I think it's uh, something that if you do Jiu Jitsu or any combat sport the, the competition is, is uh, yeah really I mean actually like we are focusing very often on competition right and this is the goal to compete to be good to beat people but actually Jiu Jitsu is it's a big area right mm -hmm. and the comp competition is a very small one um, and a friend of mine, he's teaching self-defense, mm -hmm. and his jiu-jitsu training is just toward self-defense. It's different, like more the like crazy university mm -hmm. from Hena. Mm -hmm. This is more like a distraction, but where I think you get more people who are going to compete or going for self-defense. Self-defense, yeah, sure. for sure. And sure. it depends on you. Mm -hmm. And then if you look for guys over 40, I mean, they are also getting older with you. You need mm -hmm. a class for people for 40, stuff like this. But I think it always, we always think it's most important is the competition, how to perform there. Mm -hmm. But I think this is only our mindset, mm -hmm. okay? And the mindset could be different. It actually could be bring more students too. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. 
And I think there are schools that are focused on competition. Yeah, you can sure. see it in, in, even you, in the US. I mean, yeah. who goes to Atos, right? Yeah. yeah. You don't go there to have fun. Obviously, they, they probably have hundreds of students that yeah. will never compete, and that's, that's fine. But um, their name is built around it's this. Competition, like, yeah. But I think in Jiu-Jitsu, you can build your name too without competing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. possible, but it's, possible. it's such a, a decision to make. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's uh, it's not really. I think it's good to have it there, like sure. uh, uh, that we don't do it just for. I don't think it's going to happen, but it, it could lead to a way of a. Uh, and I don't want to badmouth karate or something, but that, that it's going to go so far away from the real use because our sparrings are really real. I mean, there is it's hundred percent real. There's yeah. no. no of course, you need you can go lower intensity, but uh, you would do the same in the competition. It's no like fake sparring. Yes, you have to do with the knife in in self defense because obviously if you that, that's for sure. Yeah. If you mean that you can translate the competition also for self defense, I think definitely because very often a competitor is uh, very used to pressure mm -hmm. and he can perform well in self defense yeah. too. But the main mindset is different. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mean it like this. I meant that it's um it's really good for the school to. Uh, to have uh, have more more choices for, for the people, not necessarily like you don't need to have a class for everything, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, th to to keep a cu couple of guys competing and to show that you can go to maybe four competitions a year. It doesn't need to be like uh, every week. We need to go to the biggest competitions, but uh, you you will you will show to the to all students uh, that it's part of the, the jujitsu, and then they, they can try. They don't need to. Mm -hmm. And as you said, there are there are names. Uh, I like um, uh, Brian Glick. Mm. He's, he's amazing. Uh, all his videos, this fluidity of movements. I don't know. He's 50, 60. I, I can't tell. He's, he looks amazing. Uh, and that's he, he never competed, right? Mm. And and uh, the stories are that in the blue basement he destroyed everybody. Yeah, like he was a good com uh, like competition. Yeah. Uh, I mean, partner for Gordon Ryan for yeah. the best of the best. So. It's definitely possible to be the gym beast, as they call them, right? For sure. Yeah. I, I actually, it's also comparable. Like um, now, we have the world's and high, the highest um, competition in America. Mm -hmm. um, in two weeks, right? Yes, but what will change when we put this in America and in Brazil? It's totally different mm -hmm. because uh, very good guys there in Brazil they cannot make it to America. Mm -hmm. Even all the parts of the world, they cannot make it. Mm -hmm. So it does mean that always the best guys fight in the world. Right. Because right. for us, like uh, for us, it's sometimes hard to go there. Yeah, definitely. But we could afford it. Look at the Brazilian guy who is training oh, yeah. hard; he cannot afford it. So it does mean that only the good guys are there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think they should also start to switch the competition from time to time. It yeah. will change completely the yeah. the stars. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, that's gonna be hard because. Uh, uh, IBJJF is a uh, more commercial oriented, yeah, sure. so sure. it's uh, they they know what they yeah, are sure. doing. Uh, that's unfortunate. It's good that the ADCC is changing. Yeah. Even though now they when they Moja seem to go over, I think it's gonna stay for in in US for some time. And uh, you can't blame them. The the thing that happened no, in China sure. it was horrible. And even in Finland, I was there uh, in 2017 with a couple of friends fr from the gym. And that's, by the way, how we met all the guys from uh, Dunn Her Dad School, yeah. because we just ran into them in a park after the ADCC uh, to, to Nicky Ryan and, and Ethan and, and Oliver Taza. And we bought tickets to the, the, the cheapest ones, I don't yeah. know, 50, 60 euros to the, to the top of the stadium. And they, they just closed it, right? They, they needed to, there was not enough people to fill it in and they didn't want to look it bad, uh, badly on, on the camera. So they... They should told us no. You go down down there for the, I don't know 150 dollar euro tickets. So I understand kind of that, that when they have the chance in yeah, the America, the crowd is different. Exactly, yeah. it's a, it's really it's really popular. I think it's like hundreds of maybe not hundreds of but tens of thousands definitely people who are actually watching and, and doing it. Um, if you compare it to, to our sure. local 30 or 40 black belts, it's. Uh, it's a different story, and uh, especially if uh, it's still not a viewer sport that much. No, it's not. And yeah. maybe it will change. We'll see. But uh, uh, right now, only well, we 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 know who was yesterday What's happening, in, yeah. in the flow grappling, right? Or who's number one? But nobody else, basically, on the people. So we'll we'll see. But it's it's exciting times. So even in our uh, gym, we we feel that people are looking for. Uh, jiu jitsu classes now more even than for Krav Maga, mm -hmm. for self defense, it's really going up. Uh, thanks to MMA for sure. Uh, sure. And uh, also the connection from the Nogi guys, I think. Mm -hmm. Nogi and MMA guys are closer. 
and to think that also brought the the the, the numbers mm. up a little bit. Mm. Definitely. Okay, Martin. Thank you very much for talking. Do you have something that you wanna wanna share? No, you you asked about plateaus or something. Yes, we we did a uh, we did a one, one short episode with Renato and I um, asked her ask him about plateaus about basically when people feel maybe after one year or two years of training uh, uh, how uh, uh, they feel that they cannot move that they are they feel stuck. What would you recommend for them? To, what did Renato to... say? <laughs> Renato kind of surprised me uh, uh, because I I thought he would say something like you you switch to maybe different style, you pick different techniques. But he said uh, that in the end, it's, uh, it's your decision, which, uh, which, is, which, which is true that uh, it's basically underlying if you want to learn and overcome the plateau and embrace the suck, as he said, uh, than anything else. Uh, then like, because uh, the people who, who will leave when they reach the plateau, they will find something else yeah. and they will reach um, the plateau again. So I, I will answer this question like this, like um, you talk about plateaus in Jiu-Jitsu, but plateaus are not only happening in Jiu-Jitsu. They have this in life, you have this with your relationship, you have this with your kids, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's like, shit, this is something too normal. Mm -hmm. Okay, why is it not changing? But what do you do when there's a plateau with your relationship? Well, you need to work it out, or That's maybe it. you get divorced. That's it. <laughs> That's, That's it. That's it, yeah. So, the same as Jiu-Jitsu. Mm. If you like it, um, work it out. Work it out. If you don't like it, switch. But in the end, I think plateaus are part of life. Mm. And I think in Jiu-Jitsu especially, um, if you don't feel like a beginner anymore, there's something wrong with you. Um, for me, always one of my main um, mantras in life was, um, if you think you, you are somebody, you stop becoming somebody. Mm -hmm. And the same is, I can re bring you to a plateau because your mindset changes. Mm -hmm. And the think if you have a mindset um, which is always improving and trying to get better, then a plateau is not possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I can challenge myself in different ways. Yes, okay, definitely. but in life the same. Um, in, in in work, sometimes you see, man, I do everything and it's not going to change. Mm. Okay, what do you do? You you change. You think about other areas, or uh, you, you switch solution. switch switch to another job. Yeah. Okay, of course it's your decision, mm. but if you want to overcome in uh, this, I think work on your mindset. Mm. Yeah, and I think it's it's coming back to everything basically. Uh, do you want it? Yeah, that's then change it and find a way to change it. It may take two days, two months, or two years. Yeah, that's what we were saying um, yesterday on the camp here um, too. But like, um, we always um, think that it's so important um, to get a belt, to get a stripe, or something mm -hmm. like this. Then for other people, it's very important to compete good to get uh, the first, uh, uh, first on the podium. Mm -hmm. But in the in the end, it's all your mindset. Okay, and your your limit is how you limit your mindset. Mm. Okay, if your mindset is open, there won't be a limit. But if you close yourself, if you, like I teach you something, mm -hmm. and you are sure you know it better than me, can you learn something from me? No, for sure not. No. If uh, I meet you and say, man, I'm sure I can learn something from you, there's no plateau for you. Because even if I teach something wrong, you say, mm, it was nice, I know it already better, but I'm still open if there's something pops up, I don't know. One detail. Yes. But that happens very often when you have a teacher and think, man, I learned from him everything, I cannot learn anything anymore. Mm. Okay, you did the limit on yourself. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Uh, uh, I, have a, I have a very short story about this. Uh, we go for swimming classes with my younger, younger child. And there, there is the teacher, because it's a small group, and the teacher says, like, do, do you mind if I correct you? I'm like... That's why I'm here because I know nothing about swimming. I, yeah. I have zero knowledge of how to teach my ch children swim. So yes, please correct me. And she, and she was like, yeah, but because when uh, you're, you're also, she knows that I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher or I'm a, I'm a, I'm a coach. So she, she's like, yeah, well, we had some like uh, confrontations before with some people who were in the, in the like educating educational business uh, from different sorts. And they just quit because I told I them to uh, how to do it, and I was like, "That's pretty horrible." Yeah, that's right. But but good for you because yeah. you you don't, you don't want but, but you see, people to it's teach. It's it. very easy in Jiu Jitsu mm. because okay, if you have more teachers in your school, you probably find someone who can relate to your mm -hmm. um, mindset. But in life, it's even harder because you have to find somebody who can help you. Mm. Okay, and in the end, 
you can change because the mind changes. Mm. Yeah, that's what I think. That's good. And I think to be honest, it's pretty much aligned with, with what Renato said. Yeah, about, okay. So you, it's good that you are uh, good partners for these things. I don't know if, if because of this, but I think uh, to see the bigger picture, then just be good in techniques mm -hmm. is, I think, what we're trying to accomplish in the session. I think so. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I feel it like um, th these camps give me a lot of energy, like even and from I learn a lot of techniques, of course, I spar with a lot of guys. It's, it's all great. But just to see that the community is healthy and you have friends that you see two times a year and you can still relate like whenever I see you or, or Renato, it's like, you know, old friends that I'm seeing every day, but yeah. I'm not. Okay, we are we, we stay in touch uh, via WhatsApp and everything, but it's not the same. But still, you have uh, the community is, is is really really strong, and it gives me uh, gives me good energy to to try to replicate that in with, within our setting, small or local. Uh, when of, obviously you have a you have much uh, uh, closer contact with with the students, but still sometimes um, uh, I think I think that's that's what's missing and. Um, I, I listened to one podcast with uh, with one. Uh, he's a Polish black belt, but he lives in the US. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna mispronounce his name. Is I think it's Rodzinski, something like mm -hmm. that. And he says uh, he had a podcast with uh, with Jan Batista, mm -hmm. and uh, Jan Jan Batista said that he remembers uh, that everything in Jiu Jitsu, Jiu -Jitsu basically took place after the classes. Yeah. That they they all did everything. They stayed until two a.m. and yeah. talked and did did rolling and that's that's kind of what we have here. That, that the class is finished. We are supposed to be on the at, at dinner table already, but we are still rolling yeah. and discussing and tweaking and and that's just. Uh, I think we are pretty lucky that we can do this. Yeah, uh, sure. ob Obviously, it's also our choice, but but it's uh, it's a good time to be alive. Yeah, the techniques are just the peak of the iceberg. Yeah, yeah, and it's the deep dive that you can yeah. you can dig something like. Like a, I don't know, like an archaeologist, and yeah. dig down and find out what, what kind of dinosaurs. Yeah, and there, because there's so many people, there's always somebody who who has an answer for your questions. Mm -hmm. um, not one guy can answer all your questions because there are so many areas, mm -hmm. and we cannot get all the, good in all areas. Um, but that's the problem. Sometimes Jitsu people have that they think they have a, a higher degree and they think they know everything. No, mm -hmm. we are just good in Jitsu. Yeah. But we are not good in business. We are not good in marketing. We are not good probably with family problems. Yeah. But yeah. there's probably someone on the camp who can help you with this stuff. And this is Definitely. more important than just get the newest leg lock or something. Definitely. And I think the mindset that you talked about uh, about about learning uh, in Jiu Jitsu, it's more I know, the more I know that I, more more I know what I don't know. You know, there's so many things that discover new positions and, and new transitions. Like, oh man, what what the hell is this? I, I need to get 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 the hang of it. And it's kind of in in academic sphere, it kind of stops, right? You're an engineer or a master's degree, and now you're the man. Every, everybody needs to listen to a doctor because he spent six years in the university, but maybe he stopped yeah. learning at after right after in the university. And uh, yeah, so. This this is this mindset is really really good really really needed for everything not only Jews for everything yeah so I'm I'm happy that this is being uh, spoken out loud here it's really good cool okay thank you very much Martin it was a pleasure. A pleasure thank pleasure you for doing it with me yeah it's um, I'm not sure how uh, many people w uh, will will uh, will hear this because of uh, the English I hope I will put a subtitle so I hope uh, they, you will you guys listening to us are going to enjoy this and uh, maybe we'll do an, another one in, in the next camp which is by the way uh, Croatia in Portage yes and in the end of September end of September so it's like 30 September and to 1st yeah, October first like so that. if somebody's interested it's, it's uh, pjintensivecamp.com and the information is all there yeah yeah Definitely, somebody from our school will be coming. Rich, I think uh, Richard is coming. I might be coming too. Uh, and um, uh, definitely, you can ask the guys that are here with me today on, on the camp uh, how they uh, liked it. I'm sure they liked it because we talked about it already. Talked about it already. So if you want to join uh, for these camps, just uh, hit us up. You don't need to be affiliated with any school. It doesn't matter. It's only about uh, having fun with jujitsu, learning, caring. Uh, sharing the mats and enjoying sometimes. Okay, thank you very much, Martina. Again, thank you.